Hi, welcome back to Dielectric Videos. It's been over a year since I self-installed the Dangerous Things NEXT or NEXT NFC implant, and it has been a really cool addition to my biohacking endeavor. In particular, I want to show you three use cases that I've used this implant for over the past year, and how I actually set up the hardware and software to operate those use cases. The first use case that I want to go over today is the use of the NFC implant's low frequency capabilities for gate key access. The second that I'd like to show is the use of the NDEF records to store URLs that can then be scanned using NFC compatible smartphones. Finally, the third and most exciting application that I want to show is the custom implementation of an NFC interlock security system for this dune buggy and for any general purpose interlock system. Let's get started. Before going into the technical details of the applications of the NFC implant, I wanted to mention a little bit more information about the original video and the outcomes of the installation. I self-installed the implant in that video, and it did actually install very successfully. I experienced no after effects that caused any sort of discomfort or loss of mobility or performance on this hand, and additionally, the scarring is very minimal. The implant ended up in the location roughly where I wanted it. In fact, you can just slightly see the tip of that implant here, and it worked extremely well. It got good reception from the radio devices interacting with it and was generally successful. That being said, however, my installation practice drew a lot of criticism on YouTube and otherwise because it was not done particularly well. The installation was relatively amateurish, again as I had mentioned in that video, I went in with virtually no experience in the field, and a lot of recommendations that I should have probably followed were not followed in that video. For example, it is best to get someone else to additionally help while doing the installations in order to tent the skin and properly ensure that the implant is installed in the correct location. Furthermore, marking the location where the implant is intended to go can help in insertion in ensuring that the installation site is correct, and overall it is best practice to have someone with good experience in body modification do these implantations. That being said, however, my installation did in fact go very well, and it's been working extremely nicely, so if you do choose to get one of these implants, take all of those pieces of advice into consideration before making your decision about where and how to install your device. One of the main reasons I selected the DT Next as my implant of choice was because it supports dual frequency operation. This implant supports 125 kHz HID and prox card protocols and additionally supports the 13.56 MHz NFC protocol. So, for the low frequency applications, I was actually able to use this to emulate a gate key access card. I scanned the gate key access card using a low frequency scanner that can be easily purchased online, and then I used this to clone the card onto the NFC implant. What I can do is actually show you how this device can read the data code off of the low frequency side of the implant right now. I, always, I just have to place the implant up to the device, press read, and as you can see it's read a number off of the NFC or the low frequency RFID side of the implant. This was extremely useful as I was able to use the implant chip rather than the card key for the gate access at the facility where I was needing to access it. However, after I left that facility and was no longer in need of accessing the gate, it was no longer necessary for me to use the low frequency side. I haven't used the 125 kHz side of the implant that much since, but it is still a very useful feature to have if I ever need to program on low frequency prox cards in the future. I should note, before you decide to go ahead and purchase a DT Next, there are a number of more advanced implants on the market from DT right now. For example, the, the Dangerous Things XSIID implant is now available widely in multiple colors. It provides LED indication and NFC service at the same time, but it lacks the low frequency operation of the Next. If you think you'll only need to use high frequency NFC, then this is an excellent choice as it works just as well as the Next, but also includes LED indication, making it even more cool from a futuristic standpoint. Another such device from Dangerous Things is the Flex NT device. It is also an NFC only device, but it's a larger flexible implant, which includes much larger reception coil area, and thus can be read and programmed from a greater distance than the Next device. Nevertheless, despite these added advantages of the newer devices, I do think the Next is still a good choice as an all-around useful and versatile NFC slash RFID implant device, and I think it's very much still relevant as a highly desirable implant device to use today. 
Before I go over the software and hardware that I've been using to interact with the higher frequency NFC side of the chip, I also wanted to show you a really cool little party trick that I discovered about the NEXT, which also likely applies to most of the other implant devices. If you take a strong neodymium magnet and put it up against the device, you'll find that it's actually strong enough to hold the weight of the magnet. It's quite impressive considering this just has a small ferrite core and isn't extremely magnetic. Now if you're concerned about the MRI compatibility of the device, considering it is receptive to magnetic fields like this, it shouldn't be a major concern, because the BH curve of ferrite is fairly shallow. Once it reaches saturation, it won't exert a considerably higher force on the magnetic field being applied to it than it will when a moderate magnetic field like this neodymium magnet is being applied. So, as has been backed up by the DT representatives, the next device should be MRI compatible, but it does still attract magnets with sufficient strength to hold the magnet in place when installed at a fairly shallow depth in the tissue. I thought that was pretty cool, and certainly it is a fun little demonstration of the device proving that it is in fact installed in this location. One of my favorite use cases for this NFC implant is its ability to interact with NFC compatible devices such as this iPhone. Right now I have the NDEF record for my YouTube channel programmed into the NFC implant. I'm going to open the NFC uh, go to tag scan option and I'm simply going to slide the phone across my implant. What you'll see shortly is that it's going to take me directly to the YouTube channel and as you can see the YouTube channel has loaded up. This is a very cool application for this implant because not only does it make for a cool party trick, but it can also be quite useful for actually showing clients or other people you want to show uh, your channel to or your website to your overall website and portfolio at a moment's notice. No need for business cards, flash drives, or typing in links on the browser. In my opinion, one of the coolest applications for the NFC implant is its ability to be used as an interlock device for an ignition switch. This means that I can use it as a car key. This dune buggy has been equipped with a custom NFC interlock box, which searches for a specific NDEF record on the NFC implant, and will only enable the starter motor to be run if that NDEF record is detected. Let's try it out and see how it performs. I'm going to turn on the main ignition switch, and now I'm going to try to crank the engine. As you can see, the engine cranking will not work if the light is red. However, once I've scanned and presented the NFC record to scan in, the light will turn green and I can then start the vehicle. Let's go ahead and have a look inside the box to see how I actually implemented this custom NFC solution. This is the Adafruit PN532 NFC reader and programmer that I've been using for both the NFC interlock system and for programming my NFC implant. This device is available from Adafruit and comes with well-documented software that's compatible with Arduino. It can be connected directly to an Arduino Uno via the shield breakout or alternatively can be connected via SPI or I2C to a separate Arduino such as an Arduino Nano. What I ended up doing was actually cutting the PN532 in half. I removed the antenna from the board and directly soldered a fully custom wire wound antenna to the board on its output terminals. This allowed me to place the antenna in closer proximity to the NFC logo on this 3D printed box and thus also enabled me to remove the lid without needing to have the PN532 board connected to the front side of the box. Adding the custom loop antenna additionally increased the accessibility range for reading NFC tags from what it was when it was only using the PCB antenna. As to the circuit itself, I have it drawn out on paper here. My custom loop antenna and PN532 are connected to the Arduino Nano via its SPI connections. I also supply 5 volts to the PN532 and additionally empowering the Arduino Nano from an LM7805 linear regulator. That's this component here. I've connected the linear regulator to the 12 volt supply from the vehicle and I've additionally decoupled it using a 470 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. This decoupling is also combined with a diode which blocks current from being able to flow out of the uh, capacitor back into the car so that the system doesn't reset while the engine is cranking. Engine cranking can result in considerable voltage drop on the ignition line so it is best to have some reserve energy in this capacitor. In addition to this, I have the Arduino Nano connected to a set of indicator LEDs, green and red, which are shown here, via a set of one kilo ohm current limiting resistors. 
Finally, in order to actually interlock the ignition switch, I have a 5 volt relay connected to the output pin of the Arduino, which is controlled in software by the Arduino's ability to detect the NFC card via the PN532. Although the primary function of this particular box is to unlock and interlock the ignition switch on the dune buggy, it is also just as effective as a programmer for adding new records to the NDEF system on the NFC implant. In particular, the PN532 can be set as a programmer in addition to a reader as it's being used in this system. Simply by reprogramming the Arduino Nano, using the USB port which I've made accessible on the outside of the box, new NDEF records can be written to the NFC tag and existing records can be read off in great detail using the serial output of the Arduino. Let's go have a look at some of these software configurations, which are also posted on my GitHub where they can be accessed and downloaded for your own use. In order to program the NFC implant with useful information such as URLs or other data, the NDEF records of the implant or other NFC device must be programmed. This Arduino sketch called NDEF URL GitHub, which is also posted to my GitHub account, is useful for performing this sort of programming action. It's based on the example from the Adafruit PN532 library, and additionally is already programmed with a URL that can be flashed onto the board, or NFC implant. In particular, this is the URL to my YouTube channel. Other URLs can of course be set in this field, and it is important to note that the prepended HTTP forward slash slash www is included when NDEF URI prefix HTTP www dot is included as the NDEF prefix setting. We can now program the NDEF URL code onto the Arduino board within the interlock device. In this case, we're going to use the interlock box as a programmer for the NFC implant. By pressing upload, the sketch will first compile and this will allow it to then be programmed onto the Arduino board within the interlock box. As you can see, compiling is still taking place, and it's now beginning to program to the external board. The program is now written to the board and can now be utilized via the serial monitor. With the serial monitor open, you can see that the onboard program within the Arduino is now waiting for me to put my NFC tag up to the programmer and execute the program. It is very important to be sure you have good contact and good communication between the programmer and the chip in order to prevent corruption during the programming cycle. I've now placed the implant in close proximity to the programmer coil, and I'm now going to press the enter button after selecting the text field in the Arduino serial monitor. Upon pressing enter, it's going to erase all data on that section of the chip and rewrite the NDEF record. Once both of these have been confirmed as done, you are now done programming the URL into your NDEF chip. Once you've successfully programmed your NFC card, you can check to see what its contents are using the program that I've also uploaded to GitHub called NDEF Read GitHub. This particular Arduino sketch is also based on the Adafruit PN532 library, but it's been specially modified to support reading even larger NFC tags, including the 225 page NFC tags, such as the Dangerous Things NEXT tag. What I'm going to do now is open the serial monitor and read in the data using this program. After you've installed NDEF Read to your device, to your Arduino board and programmer, when you open the serial port, you'll get a screen that looks like this. All you have to do to begin reading off the contents of the NFC implant or NFC card is to simply put it in proximity of the receiver coil. Upon doing that, it will begin reading out the data. You can already see that the YouTube link that I put into the program for programming the URI NDEF record is present at the beginning of the record. Additionally, you'll be able to read out all 225 pages of the chip or however many pages your chip has within its memory contents. Now let's have a look at the program that's actually running on the NFC interlock box within the Dune Buggy. This program is available on GitHub. It's called Dune Buggy NFC GitHub, and again, it's based heavily on the Adafruit PN532 library and examples. I've specifically tailored this to provide a digital pin output when it's successfully authenticated to a programmed NDEF record on the NFC card. While this has been optimized for use with an ignition interlock system, it can be used with any interlock system such as a house key uh, electronic lock or additionally a computer uh, locking mechanism that utilizes a digital input pin to unlock it. 
The way that this program works is it seeks for a specific key of four consecutive numbers within the NDEF records. These can be any numbers, I believe, up to eight bits of data, so up to 255, and they are located at a page location that you can specify. Keeping these values in mind, you can then set the programmer or the NDEF record programmer to load the particular code that you're going to use into your implant or NFC card. Then the program simply searches for this record, and once it detects it, it triggers an output pin to turn on. In this case, I have two output pins configured, one that shows an indicator LED, either a red one or a green one, depending on which pin is activated, and a separate pin for driving a relay, which can then control the ignition switch or some other function within the vehicle or system operated. In order to flash the NDEF record for your NFC interlock system to your NFC implant or card, you can use the program NDEF Block Update GitHub. This program provides the option to write over a single page without affecting or deleting any of the other pages within the NFC card. That page is located at the page location specified here, and the contents of that page to be written is specified here. This is where you'll put the secret key that you previously specified in your interlock program, that was the dune buggy interlock program, and at the location that that program is searching for the interlock. Let's go ahead and install this to the Arduino and see it in action. After successfully installing the NDEF block update program to the Arduino board within the interlock device, I can now install or flash the NDEF record that we programmed in earlier to the NFC implant. I'm going to place the implant in close proximity to the programming coil, select the text box, and press enter. Once it finishes, it'll say done after writing that NDEF record to the respective page on the implant, and we can now verify that that page has been successfully overwritten. I've gone ahead and reinstalled NDEF read to the NFC programmer that we also are using as an NFC interlock system. When I put the NFC implant in close proximity to the reader coil, I can begin reading blocks off of it to verify that we were able to successfully program the NDEF page containing all ones at the location 100 to the chip. So let's go ahead and check that. As you can see, the YouTube link is persistent. Nothing was erased apart from the one page we're interested in. As we approach page 100, you'll be able to see that all ones have now appeared at that page. We'll go back and inspect that more closely once we've finished reading off all of the other pages from the implant. Now that all the other pages have successfully finished reading, we'll go back to page 100. As you can see, 01010101, exactly what we specified, is in fact programmed successfully to the page. That means that we can now use this with the NFC interlock device as the passcode. Of course, you can set this passcode arbitrarily to whatever values you want to be more secure. In case you want to try any of these experiments yourself, all of the Arduino files that I put together and referenced in this video are openly available on my GitHub repo. You can find them under the repository NFC implant tools, and this location will be linked in the description of this video. I should note though that before you test any of these programs on your actual NFC implant, if you do have one, you should probably verify these on an external card, like a regular MyFair Classic card which can be reprogrammed as an NDEF record card, or another NFC compatible NDEF record card, in order to just be sure that they're working correctly. Although the probability is low, it is possible to completely brick your NFC implant if you incorrectly program it or if the connection gets garbled during a programming cycle. This would be very unfortunate and would likely require you to replace the device, a most unpleasant process indeed. So it's always best to test these experiments at your own risk and ensure that you verify their performance on a non-critical card before proceeding to your bio implant device. Well, I hope you enjoyed the one year update video after I installed this NFC implant. I certainly learned a lot about the technology and I really enjoyed building electronics to support the systems and utilize them to their fullest potential. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you find the GitHub files that I posted useful. Anyway, happy biohacking and thanks for watching.